Hello everybody. Today I'm standing next to trainer of champions, trainer of uh, Flex Lewis, William Bonac and right now also Big Rami, yes. Neil Hill. Neil, hello. How are you doing guys? Listen, first and foremost, obviously I appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak to me and I know that obviously you guys are doing some really good things within the industry. You know, we're all crossed indirectly, you know, in, a, in an environment, in a sport that we're all very love. So I, I appreciate the fact that I get the chance to obviously speak to everybody at home if I can't obviously speak to them face to face. Well, we also thank you, Neil, because you are doing amazing things in the bodybuilding industry, not, also, not only for your athletes, but for trainees all around the world because mostly you are coach right now you used to be great bodybuilder yes. professional bodybuilder yeah how do you uh, remember uh, that time when you were the biggest guy in the gym and <laughs> so on um, well I was certainly was never the tallest guy in the gym um, so uh, maybe I was the biggest guy in the gym but you know I started training when I was 19 just by chance I know I I never said to myself right I'm gonna start bodybuilding what happened is that a very good friend of mine couldn't drive he wanted me to bring him to a bodybuilding show I had no interest in bodybuilding didn't you know what it was I brought him to the show because he wasn't able to drive I you know I borrowed my mum's car I went with my girlfriend at the time and as soon as I saw these athletes on stage it was like wow I I want to be a bodybuilder so of course you know I was very naive I was young I was 19 um, you know I I learned the hard way I guess as well and what I mean by that is obviously I a lot of made a lot of mistakes but at the same time I learned from those mistakes and um, I was very passionate about what I did I was one of those people who really wanted to you know, create art with my own physique, bring a very symmetrical conditioned physique to the stage, and that was one thing I was always known for. And of course, in 2002, I, I gained my IFBP Pro status by winning the overall Open Wales, um, which was a, obviously a big thing for myself. I'd already won the overall Welsh Championships a number of times at different weight divisions, and obviously then going on then in 2002 to win my Pro Card was a big thing. But unfortunately, you know, my time on stage was really destined to end very shortly because I had a very, very serious knee injury which I had, uh, that I had picked up really obviously years before, but it was a hereditary issue. So, you know, it, it was limited my ability to do what I needed to do in the gym, you know, to train my legs the way I needed to. And it was very frustrating because I knew I had a future. You know, there, you know, there are a lot of great pros out there, but there's very few which actually really make it. I felt that I had the, the shape and the structure, the genetics to make it, but unfortunately with my injury, it wasn't meant to be. But that, then, that actually obviously turned my attention from me being, you know, consumed with myself then obviously put my time into the athletes and in 2003 a year after I turned pro is when I when I met Flex Lewis for the very first time and obviously you know the relationship and what we've achieved between coach and athlete is amazing but what we have as friends you know is far far greater so um, you know it's a pretty cool amazing story I think that what we've done and of course Everywhere that we've been, we've always been together as, you know, with the companies and obviously we're part of Yamamoto. So I'm very proud to have the opportunities to coach Flex, but I'm also very proud to stand behind, you know, a company which stands for what I believe what sports supplementation is all about. And that's about innovation and producing a product line for the people to choose what they want instead of forcing something on them, which isn't going to see the, the changes that they're looking for. Of course, we are at FIBO Germany, Cologne. Uh, how, how many years have you been going here? Well, actually, not that many because even though I came to FIBO for the first time, probably about 12 years ago, 15 years ago, this is the third time I've actually been to FIBO because I've always been pre-committed to other events or commitments at home, etc. You know, so this is the first time I've been to FIBO for about eight or nine years. So um, first time in Cologne, obviously. Um, I've walked very briefly round, round this one hall, and, it, and, and this is just one of many halls. But um, FIBO has always been built on the foundations of setting the precedence of everything what sport our sport is about from health, fitness, to functional training, to supplementation, to the very latest um, techniques and discipline, and obviously uh, an amazing array of um, gym equipment. 
Neil, how do you remember that FIBO 12 years ago compared to this FIBO? There's a big difference, right? Yeah, there's a massive difference. But I think that it's it's you know it's in par with our industry. Our industry has changed immensely, you know, from a competitive field to a health and fitness field to what we see with all these different divisions which are obviously in our sport now. And of course, I'm a I'm a very proud individual to stand behind the IFBB Pro League. I stand here in FIBO um, flying the IFBB Pro League uh, flag. That being said, I'm also excited to see obviously compete, uh, people competing in whatever divisions and whatever classes and whatever federations that they choose, you know. People have the ability to pick and choose what's right for them and not everybody is at that level to be able to compete at the very highest level, which is the IFBB Pro League. So seeing the sport, you know, being very, very diverse is great and then obviously seeing FIBO grow so much is very, very cool. You know very well that there are many federations all around the world. Uh, NABA is huge in the UK. Yep. Flex Lewis was uh, formerly competing in uh, NABA. Yep. Um, how did the uh, big bodybuilding split between NPC, IBB, International impact to you? It hasn't impacted me. I think it's. Uh, I think it's a little sad, but it's also very positive. The reason I say it's a little sad is because there are some federations which are. Um, putting disciplines on their athletes which compete in their federation that they can't compete in other federations and I don't really always agree with that and the reason why I say that is because I think that people should be able to have the right to pick and choose what's right for them um, you know the split between the IFBB and the IBB Pro League you know I don't know the reasons behind it but obviously there were reasons where both parties felt that they need to obviously fly the nest and go in different directions that being said the IFBB Pro League is only growing in strength from the split obviously you know the worldwide division is op obviously opening up now for um, you know what would be say the NPC or the IFBB Pro League amateur division you know obviously we've seen multiple events taking place in so many different um, uh, countries around the world so obviously the IFBB Pro League or the NPC or whatever foundation we're calling that as a whole is growing rapidly where um, I feel the IFBB has not got the depth or the ability to grow in the way that the IFBB Pro League is. But as I said, I mean, it's, you know, having different divisions and having different federations is cool because people can choose what's right for them. There are some countries where certain federations are very strong, which means that there is obviously going to be more influx of athletes because that is where the opportunities are. But as I said, I mean, like for myself, I mean, I stand here behind, you know, the Yamamoto stand or in front of the Yamamoto stand representing the IFBB Pro League. But I'm a big advocate and a lover of bodybuilding. So for myself, you know, I represent everyone from every division, from every federation, because I'm just a coach who is just concentrating on trying to do the best for my athletes. And if it means they live in different countries or they compete in different federations, then, hey, you know, it's not for me to judge. Bodybuilding in the UK, Britain, it's really exciting these days. You have Flex Lewis, Nathan Diasha, Samson Dauda, James Hollingshead, Luke Sendow, Mark Hector, yes. very new aesthetic pro. How, how, does, how did bodybuilding change in the last two years in the UK? Because I see a huge boom. I think what it is is that I do think that um, Flex Lewis has allowed individuals to be able to relate to him in the UK and see and realize that the ability for them to compete on an international stage I mean let's just look at Luke Sandal okay let's go back like what well, maybe two or three weeks coming third in the Arnolds in Columbus um, what an amazing result for Luke Luke's a really good guy you know he he's very positive um, he's very professional in his approach trains extremely extremely hard exactly the same as James and um, I think they're self-motivated by their own desire to be the best but also I think they're obviously being inspired Inspired by past great um, British athletes, Doreen Yates being one, and obviously now presently Flex Lewis. So I think that it's it's just it's just the evolution in general. I think that we're going to see change, and we're going to see you know athletes from different countries mature and go on to great statuses. You know, we still haven't seen the best of Luke. We still haven't seen the best of James. Um, I've got a lot of time for James. I think James is a an amazing representative for the UK as a professional athlete. Um, and he held himself and conducted himself very, very well 
as an amateur as well, the same as Luke. So, you know, for me to have the opportunity to see these, you know, fellow Brits um, fly the flag for Britain, but more importantly, let me just say this, guys, this sport is an individual sport, okay? So as much as obviously they're representing their countries, ultimately they're representing themselves. And I think that they're doing a very, very good, good job of representing themselves very, very well. Three more questions, three more names. Flex Lewis, uh, for me the best uh, bodybuilding ambassador in the world, mm -hmm. and many people would agree. What's next for him? Do you have uh, plans uh, set for 2020? Yeah, so our goal and our focus really purely is, is about bring in a new dimension to Flex's physique. Obviously, we stepped away from the 212 class, he won that seventh title last year in 2018. We're taking 2019 to grow and mature. Um, and then we're going to be coming back in 2020 uh, at the Mr. Olympia in Las Vegas to step on stage in the open class for the very, very first time. So that's where our focus is. Now, a lot of things can change between now and next September in 2020, yes? But that's where our focal point is at the moment, is really um, focusing on the changes which are necessary to be competitive in that open class. Um, it's more important as well as, as well as we're focused on that. I feel that Flex has had the ability for the very first time in a long time to be able to enjoy his training and his allow his physique to grow without having to lose that muscle that he's put on obviously in the gym at some point because that 212 class was intrusive towards the last, latter of years. I do feel though in 2018 we probably arguably brought our best ever look to the stage uh, in 2018 when he obviously won that seventh title where a lot of past Olympia champions have actually got slightly worse over the years. I feel that uh, Flex bowed out um, in Las Vegas last year very, very dominantly. I don't, I don't feel it was close. I felt that he was, you know, there was Flex Lewis and then it really was the rest of the pack. But that being said as well, let's look at the rest of the pack. You've got a huge depth of professional world-class athletes. It wasn't for the fact that the depth of talent was bad. It's the fact that Flex Lewis is just so elite in what he represents on stage and off stage. I would definitely agree because everyone had this, this same feeling. Flex Lewis, he was way above everyone else last, last year and uh, we are excited for what he brings in 2020. Uh, second name, William Bonac. He looked absolutely amazing at the Columbus uh, three, four weeks ago. Yeah. How can you improve for Olympia uh, for him to challenge Sean Roden and beat Brandon Curry? Right, okay, so 2000 and... Um 2018 was a good year for William, but we didn't end 2018 the way that we hoped um, by, you know, taking that Olympia title or certainly cracking that top three again. Um, but obviously he started extremely well by winning the Arnold Classic, which was a big, big win for William. Um, this year, I got to be honest, I was disappointed with Columbus. I really felt that we brought the level of condition and refinement and muscularity and muscle bellies and completeness to the the stage to win that show now you know do i think it could have gone either way i do think it could have gone either way do i feel that we had the edge yeah i do feel we had the edge i don't feel that we had the edge because william was a past champion you know we've heard in the past people say in order to win you've got to you've got to knock out the champion no no that's not the way it should be it should be like a hundred meter sprint it doesn't make any difference if you're running against the current Olympic or world record holding champion. If you're faster on the day, you're the fastest athlete on the stage. So for myself is that um, I felt that we just brought the physique, which I felt was you know worthy of a win. Of course, I'm super happy for Brandon. Brandon's a very cl close friend of mine, used to be a past athlete of mine. I'm super happy for him. I don't think it's, a, it's an unjustified result that he won. I think it was a fair result. I just felt that we brought a physique which was um, which, which, which was able to hold that title again. That being said, two weeks later, obviously, we traveled to Australia. William went on to win that show. Last year, he came second to, obviously, our very own homeboy from Yamamoto, Rody Winkler. So, of course, William finished um, his last show very, very strong in Australia. Um, our focus, obviously, is the 2019 Mr. Olympia. What do I feel that we have to do to bring that Olympia title home? Honestly, I just feel that we need to duplicate the physique that we brought to Columbus. I feel that physique in Columbus this year and last year is capable of beating anybody currently on stage. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously prepping Big Ramy for the first year as well. 
Um, so even though I say that you know William has the ability to win that Olympias title this year, and I mean that he you know he can beat Sean Roden, he can beat everybody in front of him, he can beat. He's done it before, but he has the ability to do it now as well. That being said, nobody saw, nobody, even myself, haven't seen the best of uh, Big Ramy yet. So of course, you know, um, if if I'm able to bond and connect and, and and create the illusion of the perfect blend of muscle and refinement with Ramy, the guy's going to win the Olympia. The guy has got that much muscle on his frame. Um, but obviously that's a work in progress. You know, that's something that we're obviously working on. The most important thing at the moment for me and Rami is to co concentrate on our present goal, which is to qualify for the Olympia. I can't think about the Olympia and what we're gonna bring to the Olympia stage until we concentrate on qualifying with our present prep. Of course, Rami is that third name I'm voted to ask you. Uh, Dave Palumbo mentioned that he's gonna do New York Pro from good sources. I heard he is not doing New York Pro. Uh, Can you tell us what show is Rami doing? My guess is something in uh, late uh, July. Okay, so it's funny you should say that because actually Dave Colombo yesterday or the day before sent me a WhatsApp message saying, Neil, hey, can you let me know if uh, Rami is doing the New York Pro? No, Rami will not be doing the New York Pro. The reason being it was a show that we felt would be perfectly in keeping with uh, Rami's physique, okay? The New York Pro would be a, a very good choice for us. But unfortunately, Ramadan clashes and it's gonna definitely hinder prep. So, you know, we, we potentially could have been in a very, very good place, you know, through um, April and towards the end of April. But as soon as we were going into May and obviously Ramadan kicked in, it's gonna have an effect on his physique and it might not necessarily be for the best. So we decided not to do that show. Yes, you are correct. We are gonna be looking at doing one of the latter shows. We're gonna be doing one of the three last shows. What that show will be at the moment, I don't know. It's obviously the first day of FIBO, it's Thursday. On Monday evening, I leave Germany, I fly and I arrive in Dubai on the Tuesday morning. I'll be with Rami on the Tuesday. And then on the Wednesday, myself and Rami fly over to Egypt. Uh, we will be um, supporting the Balance Pro over there, uh, brought to obviously Egypt by uh, Balance Gym. So we'll be over there on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And of course, I'm going to have a lot of time with Rami then. So um, I'm looking forward to having that personal time. I like my personal time with my athletes. You know, I, I was with William obviously in Columbus. I also traveled over to Amsterdam twice this year to stay with William. Um, obviously traveled over to Australia. So I need that time as well that the likes of Flex and William get from me with Rami. And obviously he's going to get a lot of my time as we go further into the prep. Neil, thank you so much. I could uh, continue for two hours with you. I could ask about Flex Lewis's battle with 212 limit. I could ask you about the uh, strategies for William Bonac because I know it's very, uh, very hard and difficult for him to to compete ag against guys who are more aesthetic, mm -hmm. who have better structure, but not as freaky as him. I could uh, ask you so many questions about Big Ramy because I, I bet uh, it's very exciting uh, working with him for you. But for today, thank you so much, and I'm so happy that you are here. Okay, first and foremost, guys, listen. I appreciate obviously all the support you guys are obviously giving muscle and fitness it's great for me to stand in front of the camera and be able to touch and, and grasp and communicate with everyone around the world i wish i had the opportunity to speak to everybody face to face but unfortunately it's not possible but here myself and my friends here have been able to bring FIBO to all you guys and girls around the world so make sure you check out their all their social posts from their youtube obviously the website and everything in between and i appreciate it thank you so much cool Thank you, Neil. Okay, cool.